<sighs> Welcome everyone. Please come into your comfortable seat, whatever that means for you today. It could be that you have your legs um, in half Padmasana, you could have your legs crossed, your legs stretched out, or you could be kneeling on your shins. Let the hands find a natural place to rest where the weight of the arms can settle down. And take a moment to settle yourself against the earth, feeling into the whole length of the spine, including the back of the neck and then the head on top and finding that place where everything is balanced. Relax the jaw, relax the shoulders. Let the eyes fall closed. And take some slow, deep breaths in and out. Notice where the mind is this morning. Notice the quality of your breathing, the quality of your energy. Without forcing, see if you can find a lovely balanced in-breath and out-breath, working towards a count of five. You might not be exactly at five, you might prefer to be at six or to be at four, but somewhere around that level where you inhale for a count of five and exhale for a count of five. Watch the impact on your mind and your body as your breathing becomes the priority, becomes the focus. And for the next few breaths, work towards lengthening your exhalation a little bit more. So if your inhale is for a count of five, see if you can increase your exhalation to a count of seven or eight. Or if it's working for you, even up to, up to 10. But try not to force or strain the breathing at all. Keep the exhalation slow using Ujjayi Pranayama, if that's part of your practice, partially closing the throat canal. And notice this impact on that slower, longer breath out. When we breathe out in this way, it sends a pretty clear signal to our body that we're safe. If you were in a stressful situation or having to fight for your life, your exhale would not be long and slow and steady. So we're encouraging our body to move into the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest system. It's where our basic functions like digestion is working at its optimal. And that's where we want to be most of the time. Taking a couple more breaths here with that slightly longer exhalation. Keeping your focus on your breathing without needing to count it, just let your attention still linger on the breath. Let the eyes open and stretch the legs out. And then make some circles with your ankles. That circle really slowly in time with your breath. So we're continuing to encourage that parasympathetic nervous system to be dominant. And then pause and change direction. You may not, um, you may have guessed it already, but the focus today is on digestion. So a yin yoga practice for digestion. And your digestion will not work well unless you're working in your parasympathetic nervous system. Because it's not an immediate function that's required if you are in fight or flight. 
paddling the feet backwards and forwards. Again, working as slowly as you can manage to without driving yourself insane with the slowness. And then bending the knees up, we're gonna cross our legs now with the right shin in front of the left. Bringing the hands down to either side of the body. We're gonna work into a little bit of movement before we go into some more static holds. Working with the breath in, how to raise the arms up. And then exhale, gently lower them. Palms face down as you come down with the breath. Notice the count of your inhalation and exhalation. See if you can work back into that inhale for five and exhale being a little bit longer. Not forcing or straining, but simply letting the out breath lengthen as the body allows. And then this next time we're gonna change the arm movement and bring a twist into the pose. So inhale the arms up. And we're gonna exhale the arms down and twist to the right at the same time, bringing the left hand outside the knee. Inhale, bring yourself back to center and raising the arms again. Exhale, twist to the right again. So same side. And one last time, back to center, inhaling the arms up. And exhale, twist to the right. Pausing here, letting the belly relax, but feeling that there's some lift in the spine. Not letting ourselves sink back onto the hand behind us, but lifting away from that hand. So the right hand becomes relatively light on the floor or on your support. If your lower back feels like it's dropping backward, then you might need a little bit of height under your seat, like a blanket under the sitting bones. As the body adjusts to being in this twist, you might find there's a tiny little bit more room that you can move towards. But we're not pushing ourselves into the twist, allowing the body to acclimatize and then sink a little deeper if we are invited to. You can keep your head in line with your chest. That's a relatively neutral position for the neck. Or you can turn to look over your right shoulder. Deep, slow breaths. Working into that longer exhalation, if it's appropriate for you. Or keeping the inhale and the exhale the same length. Twists are really good for our internal organs. Those organs that are involved with digestion. It brings them out, just like wringing out a sponge. And then another way to wring them out slightly differently, when you inhale, come to the center. And when you exhale, let yourself start to fold forward over your legs. You can bring your arms down in front of you. You can support your body with your hands to the floor. You can use some props to help support you. So this is another way of changing the orientation of the organs. We're compressing them purposefully inside the abdomen. Keep encouraging a lovely deep breath. So the more deeply and comfortably you can breathe, the more you're changing the shape of the organs, pushing them out of shape with the in-breath and letting them release with the out breath. Relax the shoulders. If you feel tension through your buttocks and your hips, if you can let that go. And as you next inhale, prepare yourself for movement. And on the exhalation, begin to bring yourself back up to center. Lifting the knees up, stretching the legs out, releasing through the hips, maybe giving that flesh around the hips a little massage. You might like to circle or paddle the feet 
maybe roll the feet in and out in a windshield wiper type movement. When you're ready to bend the knees up again, and this time we kind of come into a cross-legged position with the left shin in front. Just slightly changes the orientation for the hips. If this doesn't work for you cross-legged, you can always stretch the legs out. And check in on this side, does it help to have height? If your knees are really high, then height under your seat will help lift your hips up and it will feel more comfortable. It's a more natural way of sitting. As you inhale, we're going to raise the arms above the head, working towards that count of five. And exhale, bring the arms down, palms facing the floor as you exhale. Slowing the exhalation down, getting us into that groove of being calm and relaxed. Nice long exhalation, encouraging the body towards the parasympathetic nervous system. And as you Next inhale, we're going to come into three short twists to the left, exhaling to your left, inhaling, bring the arms back up, exhale, twist to the left, not pushing or forcing, just letting the body know that that's the direction we will be heading soon, inhale, the arms up, and the last time, exhale and twist to the left. Relax the belly, lift away from the back hand and use some height underneath it if you're needing to drop back to reach the floor. You want to try and keep the spine lengthened upward so all that's happening is the vertebrae are twisting along the length of the spine. Head can be neutral or looking over the left shoulder. With a little bit of change in orientation if you want to, you can look over your right shoulder. A different sensation in the belly when you do that. Keep working with the breath. Find that space that gives you a twist but not too much sensation and then let the breath do all the work for you. If the body invites you to go a little deeper, then move towards your next edge and once more become still. As you next inhale, begin to bring yourself back to the front. Take a breath in here and slowly begin to move into that forward fold. You can bring your hands down in front of you. You can come down onto your forearms or elbows. You can use height to support in whatever way works for your body. Remember the focus here is bringing a little bit of compression into the belly. If you're feeling it predominantly in the hips and the glutes, don't push yourself to get to that place where you feel compression in the belly. Use the breath instead. So only come to where is appropriate for your body and then breathe. Taking a breath in here. Begin to prepare yourself for movement. And as you exhale, slowly Lifting yourself back up to center. Lifting the knees up and coming down to lie on your belly. Stretching the legs back behind you. Either taking your stacked hands and resting the forehead on them. Or bringing the arms to rest beside you and turning your head to one side. Allow the whole body to release up towards the floor. Let the belly relax and notice the impact of your breath on the belly. What changes can you feel taking place and how is it different between the in-breath and the out-breath? On your next exhalation, bring your hands to either side of your chest. Push into your hands and lift yourself up to tabletop. Taking an inhale, let the belly drop down and exhale around the back. 
Inhale, belly drops down. Exhale, round. Now you can stick with normal breathing here, or if you'd like to include a curled tongue breath, which is a little bit like um, an air conditioning system for the body, curl your tongue, or if you can't uh, curl your tongue, breathe through your teeth on the inhalation. And then exhale into cat. Inhaling through a curled tongue into cow. Exhale through the nose into cat. So you can keep this going with cat and cow with that curled tongue breath or breathing inha inhaling through your teeth. And then as you exhale, come into child's pose. Inhaling up into cow pose with a curled tongue, inhale. Exhale through the nose into child's pose or cat pose if you prefer. See if you can work your exhalation towards a count of six without forcing or straining. If you have a tendency to overheat, this is a really good breathing practice. It's also great for if you're feeling fatigued or bored and you want to wake yourself up. When you next bring yourself into child's pose, or if you're, you were doing cat pose, sink back into child's pose, make sure the knees are apart enough so that you are supported at your torso, but you've got a bit of space for the belly. And then take your arms beside your legs if you comfortably can, or support your forehead on your stacked fists. And settle in to child's pose. Let your breathing return to normal inhalation and exhalation through the nose. Feel the belly pushing into the inside of the thighs as you breathe in and the release as you breathe out. And as you next inhale, and to lift the head and take yourself back into tabletop, sliding the right knee forward towards the outside of the right wrist, bringing the foot a little bit across the center line and then easing the left leg back behind you. Lift up onto your fingertips, open through the front of the chest. If there's any lower back complaints, you're better to stay balanced here. But if you're comfortable to do so, you can turn to look down your back leg. It's a good way of checking to see if the front of the back leg is resting on the floor. Come back to centre. And then exhale, turn to look the other way. So you're doing both sides. A couple more times to each side, all staying in that central upright position if that works for your body. The movement's not huge here. A little bit of tilting with the shoulders, slight bit of stimulation around the abdominal and lower back region. And then as you're ready to, begin to walk your hands forward, coming down onto your elbows. When you come down onto the elbows, readjust if you need to so that the front leg is comfortably placed underneath you. You might feel that the heel of that front foot is pushing into um, the area around the descending colon. On the left side of our body, we've got the stomach and the spleen as well. Notice where your abdomen is resting either against the earth or against the leg below you. Make sure that your knee is okay. If it's not this, if this pose is not okay for your knee, come onto your back and eye of the needle instead, where the right ankle's crossed over the left knee. And then from here, see if you're able to go a little bit deeper. Can you let your elbows come out to either side, maybe supporting your head on your stacked hands? 
using any props that are a benefit to you here. It's always okay to take a yin pose into something that's more restorative. Relax the shoulders and the jaw. Let the cheekbones release. Allow the weight of the body to sink downward. Again, checking to make sure this is appropriate for your joints, particularly the right knee. If there's any pain in the knee at all, this is not the right pose for you. Come onto your back into eye of the knee. As you next inhale, begin to lift your head and your chest and up onto your hands. And we're going to release this hip a little bit by floating the leg back behind us in three-legged down dog. If you prefer not to have it, such an active rebound, simply come onto your belly and lie on your belly in a dasana. If you're going to come into three-legged down dog or actually either pose, bring the back knee in a little bit, tuck the toes, and then you can fly that leg back behind you. And from here, if you'd like to, then return to lying on your belly. You can stay in three-legged dog if that works for you. But choose the rebound that's appropriate for your energy levels and for your physical body today. And your next inhale, begin to lift the head and the chest, bringing the hands beside your chest and coming back up into tabletop. Sliding the left knee towards the left wrist and letting the foot cross the center line. Ease that right leg back behind you so that your hips are lowering towards the floor and your chest is lifted and open. If there's lower back issues, you might want to not want to come up so high, but be a little bit more forward. And you may not want to work into the twist to each side. You can just stay in upright swan. Take a breath in here. And as you exhale, twist to look towards your right leg. Inhale back to centre. Twist to look over the left shoulder. It's much stronger looking over that left shoulder. Moving in time with your breath. Exhaling to look over a shoulder and inhaling to move back to centre. One more time to each side. And then coming back to the centre, take a lovely deep breath in. And on your exhalation, start to ease yourself towards sleeping swan. And swan pose is so beneficial for the, for the digestion because it stimulates all six of the lower body channels. Our liver, our spleen and our kidneys, our yin channels along the inner thigh, our gallbladder, our stomach and our ladder channels that run at the back side and front of the leg. Once you've been on your elbows for a few breaths, you'll get to know whether or not you can go a little bit deeper. Remember, if there's pain in this front knee, or actually even in the back knee, but predominantly the front knee is the one getting the pressure. If there's pain there, come onto your back instead, cross the left ankle over the right knee, and be an eye of the needle, whatever variation works for you. If you can do so, if you're staying in this pose, take your elbows out to the side and let the head rest onto the stacked hands. Notice where the left heel has ended up. On the right side of the body is the ascending colon and also the liver. Although the liver's a lot higher than what you may realise, a good chunk of the liver is tucked in behind the rib cage. You might notice your digestive system responding to the poses that we're practicing today. There might be some gurgling. There might be a little bit of grumbling. Notice what could be arising for you and encourage it. 
This is a good sign. This means that there's activity going on in our digestive or abdominal region. As you next inhale, begin to lift the head and the chest back up onto your hands. Pulling the back knee in enough so you can tuck your toes and either make your way straight to your belly for Advasana or float that left leg back up behind you with three-legged down dog. And all of us can meet eventually on our bellies, but you stay in three-legged down dog as long as is appropriate for you. The next pose we're going to work into is saddle pose. It's going to be stimulating the stomach channel as it runs along the front of the thigh. Now, if you already know that you have relatively tight quads, um, then stay on your belly for this pose. And we'll be using a belt or a strap lassoed around the feet to give some stimulation. So actually what I'll do is I'll take us into that first pose and then you can choose if you want to stay there or come into the next variation with me. So the strap is going to hook around the, the ankles. You'll need to keep the feet a little bit flexed for this. Bring both sides of the strap into one hand and or both hands and then place just a little bit of traction. You can also use a blanket or a block under the knees so that you've got that lift happening and then you can release down onto it. So there's not too much pressure in the lower back. So that's the, that's the first variation for anyone that's got tight hammies, uh, sorry, quads. If you do not have tight quads and you want to come into um, saddle pose, come up to kneeling and take either the heels out a little bit to either side or you can stay with the buttocks and the heels touching each other and then bring yourself backward onto your hands so that you're getting some stimulation along the front of the thighs. This might be as far as you want to go. You may find that you can drop back a little more onto the elbows. Give your body a little wriggle, finding that place where the heels sit comfortably just to the sides of the sitting bones. If you're quite open and flexible through the quads, you might find that you can come all the way onto your back, maybe taking the arms up overhead. Working into the space that's appropriate for you today. I'm just gonna turn around and do it in the other direction. If you want to see what's happening with the heels, I've got the heels out to either side of my sitting bone. And then as I come backward, I just make sure that they're not digging in, they're comfortably positioned, and then lying back with my arms overhead. You might not come all the way onto your back, you might still be up on your hands, or you may be on your belly. I'm going to be here for another four or five breaths, so wherever you are, let yourself sink. Notice those spaces that you're holding tension and see if you can release them. To move out of the pose, if you're lying on your belly, it's simply a matter of releasing the strap and letting the tops of the feet come to the floor. If you're on your back, there's a couple of different options. You can come out the way you went in or you can roll to your side and release one leg at a time. And then we're going to come back around so everyone is on their belly for the rebound, letting your legs stretch out, supporting your forehead or arms beside you and head turned to the side. Next we're going to stimulate the three yin channels, the liver, the spleen and the kidney that run up the inner thigh in frog pose. Bring your hands to either side of your chest, lift yourself up to tabletop and start to walk the knees apart. You can either have the big toes together and touching for tadpole, or you can take your feet in line with your knees inside of the feet to the floor. And you come down onto your elbows. 
If you turn sideways on your sticky mat, you might get better support in the inner knee so that they're not feeling like they're gonna slide apart if you're on carpet. And you don't wanna be doing this pose onto hard uh, wooden floor. So take a blanket underneath the knees if you need to. You wanna make sure that the knees are against the soft surface. And from here, you can stay up on your elbows. If you've got enough going on in the body, absolutely stay here. If you're able to go a little bit lower, walk the elbows out just like you did in swan and rest down. Relax through the shins, the insides of the feet. There's lots of room for the breath in this pose. The belly is soft and unrestrained. So pop some nice deep breaths in and out. It's a little bit of pressure onto the front of the lungs, but we've got lots of room in the back lungs, side lungs, and for the diaphragm to descend towards the belly. An alternative to this pose, if it's uncomfortable for the knees, is to come onto your back into happy baby, a very wide legged happy baby. Or you can always come into a wide knee child's pose. That's another nice other option as well. And you're ready to make your way out of this pose. Take a lovely deep breath in, preparing the body for movement, and then exhale back onto your elbows if you've come lower. And from here, start to walk the knees back together, little tiny baby steps, bringing the knees towards one another. Come down onto your belly. If you had your head turned in frog pose, turn it the opposite way now so that your neck is getting even stimulation. The arms can rest beside you, or the head supported on your hands. And on your next inhalation, you bring your hands to either side of your chest and then roll yourself over. Make sure that you've got your black uh, block or your blanket handy and come to lie on your back. Bend the knees, place the soles of the feet on the floor. Let the knees fall together for a moment. Take a couple of breaths here. And we're gonna come into a dynamic low bridge before we move into a static hold. As you inhale, raise the arms over head and lift the hips. As you exhale, lower the hips down and release the arms beside you. Continue to move in this way for three or four more breaths or more if you really like that dynamic movement, that lifting and the lowering. Opening up the space in the front of the body as you inhale and releasing the spine and the buttocks back as you exhale. Leaving the arms where they are, this next time inhale, lift the hips and either take a block, a folded blanket, a cushion that's folded in half or a pillow or a bolster or anything that works for you to give yourself a little bit of height underneath your sacrum, that large triangular bone of about four or five fused vertebrae. They fuse just after birth, roughly, on people. And it's above the tailbone, but below the lumbar spine. So we're not into the lumbar back or the arc of the back, but it's that nice solid surface of the sacrum. Once you've got your support there in whatever way you're using it, then you can choose to stay with the knees bent as I am. Or if you'd like to, and if it works for your body, you may be able to straighten the legs. I don't find this a particularly comfortable position to be in, particularly if it's a higher block with straight legs. So I tend to keep mine bent. 
And then if you'd like to, you can bring the arms up overhead, perhaps holding onto the opposite elbow with each hand. You can stretch the arms out along the floor. You can leave the arms beside the body. Let the spine drape off whatever height you're on. Let the hips sink down. Relax the legs. Think about this changed orientation of your internal organs. What do you think it means for them to be in this shape? You can stay where you are here. There's no need to move into this next variation. But if you'd like to try a waterfall pose, bring the arms back down beside you. Make sure that you're fully and firmly supported on whatever the height is. Bring the knees towards your chest and then stretch the feet up towards the ceiling. You can do this pose up against the wall. It's a really lovely pose to do at the end of the day. It's got a whole lot of uh, wonderful benefits. It helps to restore the legs and the feet. It helps to regulate our blood flow. It relieves insomnia. Mild cases of insomnia can be very beneficial for. be beneficial for the eyes as well. And of course it's good for our digestive system. Allow the legs to float in the air. If the legs get fatigued, or this pose starts to feel tiring, you can always bring the feet back down to the floor and stay in that supported low bridge. And as you next exhale, bending the knees, returning the feet to the earth. Pushing into the feet to lift the hips, move the block out of the way, and then gently return the spine to the floor. Take a couple of breaths here with the knees still bent. Let the body acclimatize to being back in this shape. And then maybe bring the knees into the chest, hug them in. Or maybe you prefer to stretch the legs out, reaching the legs along the floor for a few breaths. Choosing the rebound that works better for you. As you next exhale, I'm going to work into a little bit of um, banana asana or crescent pose to get some stimulation to the gallbladder channel that runs along the outer thigh. Start by inhaling and taking the arms overhead. You can hold your elbows or you can stretch the arms out. On an exhalation, walk the arms and legs to the left hand side, letting the whole side, right side of the body curve. We're opening the right side, compressing the left side. Keeping the buttocks on the floor. Simply taking ourselves into a shape that's like a banana. And then letting the body rest. The more you can switch off the muscles in the shape, the more deeply you'll feel it into your connective tissue, into those fascial sacs. It's around our muscles and into the IT band, that thick band of fascia that runs down the outer thigh. If you'd like to, you can cross the right ankle over the left. And then once more sink in. This is too strong, you can always uncross the ankles. 
as you have your ankles crossed, uncross them. And bring the arms and legs back through center, maybe changing the way the arms are positioned. And then exhale, we're gonna to curve to the other side. So now the arms and the legs are coming to the right hand side. The left side of the body is lengthened, the right side is shortened. Keep both buttocks resting on the floor. And take a few breaths here and see what you can let go of. The more you release your muscular, muscular holding, the more deeply the effects will be felt in your connective tissue. If after a few breaths you're not feeling that there's much stimulation down the outside of the left leg, cross the left ankle over the right. And then release again. Hip points sinking down, buttocks soft, spread over the floor. Legs and arms and torso all relaxed, releasing into the shape that we've made. Not fighting against it and not pushing to go deeper. If you have your ankles crossed, uncross them now. Begin to bring yourself back to center, releasing the arms down beside you. Taking a couple of breaths here. And before we go into Shavasana, we're gonna have a brief supine twist. So bring the knees into your chest. This is the one of the loveliest and most gentle supine twists. Open your arms out to either side and exhale, bring the legs down to the left hand side of your mat. The arms can remain open to each side. You can use some height or support under your legs or between your knees if that helps for you. Relax the belly, feel the spine gently twisting, feel the torso revolving. And breathe into that soft space of the abdomen. Working into the breath that we did at the beginning, that longer exhalation if that works for you. We're finding an even in breath and out breath. Taking a deep breath in. As you exhale, bring the legs back to center. Take the feet down to the floor if you need to readjust on your mat. And then return to the, knee, the knees to the chest. And as you next exhale, Bring the legs down to the right hand side, arms open to each side. Using support between the legs or underneath the legs if that helps. Find a neutral position for your head. And let the body sink into the soft shape of a double legged supine twist. Shoulders relaxed. Body heavy against the floor. Taking a deep breath in. As you exhale, gently bring yourself back to center. You can keep the knees hugged in. Circle the knees or rock from side to side to give the spine a little massage. To reset slightly before we go into Shavasana. And when you feel ready to, start to stretch the legs out. Maybe take some height behind the back of the knees. It's really lovely for the lower back to have the backs of the knees supported. Maybe take a blanket under your head. Cover yourself with a blanket if you're cool. Take your time setting yourself up for Shavasana so that your whole body 
can release. So that there's no place in the body that's touching something to, that prevents it from letting go. That you're as relaxed as you possibly can be. Relaxing shoulders, elbows, wrists, each of the joints in your fingers. Relaxing hips, knees, ankles each of the joints in your feet and toes. Release the throat, the neck, let the head become heavy. And then take your focus onto that central core of yourself, the abdominal region, the digestive region. Feel the breath revitalizing this space. the flow of breath even and steady. Let the whole body support, be supported at the top of the earth. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Just breathe. releasing your focus on your breathing. Begin to prepare your body for movement. Starting small, ringing your fingers and toes. And building up so you can stretch out the whole body. Giving yourself a whole body yawn, just like you would when you wake up in the morning. Vitalizing each of the limbs. Wriggling your body however you need. And then either rolling to your side or making your way directly up to sitting. Bringing your hands into prayer position in front of the heart space, giving the head bow in honour of your practice. Namaste. Namaste.